I hope you found this classification presentation useful and, and I invite you and strongly urge you to use this system now in your, in your practices. We've tried to keep it very, very simple and to ad adopt a reductionist approach. Uh, we've defined health for the first time and, and I hope you agree that it's a pragmatic and fairly sensible definition of health. And then we've categorized uh, the gingival inflammation and gingivitis in both the, uh, the intact and the reduced periodontium and made that distinction very, very clear. So I hope you'll be able to use it to arrive at a very clear diagnosis. The diagnosis, as I said, follows the classification. The group um, were quite pleased with the outcome. Uh, there was a lot of debate. I think the major things we achieved as a group were agreeing eventually on an unambiguous decision rule. What I mean by that is you can't just pick a threshold of 10% or 30% or the four millimeter site and, and expect it to work for every case uh, because that's not biology and that's not human nature. But everybody by and large agreed on the, the definitions we came up with, the cutoff of 10% for defining health uh, or gingival inflammation, and then the cutoff point of 30% for localized versus generalized. The four millimeter closed pocket was a little bit more controversial, but there was eventually a vote and a consensus that actually, if the site isn't bleeding and it's four millimeters, then it's a closed pocket um, in a high risk patient. So you still need to monitor it very, very carefully those detailed probing measurements still need to be done on a regular basis and the patient needs supportive care and very careful uh, monitoring and observation and re-motivation. So I think the group were pleased with the outcome and uh, I hope you found uh, the presentation useful and please use it in your day-to-day -day practice.